What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. We're gonna be talking about all things Tom Ford. I love Tom Ford, he's one of my role models in life and I'm really trying to harness the energy of Tom Ford. He has a lot of expensive fragrances and I should stop referring to him as he makes these fragrances because it's just, I'm pretty sure it's L'Oreal who owns the company, but anyway, regardless, I'm gonna just assume that we have a personal connection, okay? Just let me live. They're quite overpriced, some of them, and all of them, I should say all of them. Uh, but regardless, uh, I wanna pick up more from him. I just have to wait until like, you know, it's like a car payment for every fragrance, pretty much. So my Tom Ford collection is ever growing. All right, I wanna start it off with my favorite. This is my favorite of every one of them. This is Ombre Leather. Ombre Leather is my favorite Tom Ford fragrance in the entire line. Uh, there we go. That's all you need to know about it. It's smooth leather. It's got this jasmine-like quality in here, kind of spicy, but it's it's very likable. It, it's, it's a beautiful leather fragrance done so extremely well. It makes you feel like a cowboy, a sexy, rugged cowboy that just loves America. And you just, it just smells amazing. I use this as an everyday kind of fragrance. I wear this like every, you know, as a daily scent you know, during the fall time and the winter time when it's nice and cool outside and I can get away with like fragrances like this as my daily wear. I like it a lot. The Parfum version is a little weaker for me, but it's a lot smoother. This is like the ruggedest version. The ruggedest? I don't know if that's a word, but this is the roughest one of the bunch. The Parfum is a little bit lighter and a little bit softer, well-rounded, and a lot more, I guess, mass appealing, cleaner. And then the O Ombre Leather, the, the new one, O to Ombre Leather. Um, I have not tried that one yet. I am actually going out tomorrow to Macy's to hopefully smell it. I wanna get out of the house and smell some new fragrances. Um, so I'll give my thoughts on that uh, maybe later on down the road. But right now, Tom Ford Ombre Leather, my absolute favorite. Um, one of my favorite fragrance lines is uh, the Grey Vetiver uh, line. This is the Parfum version. This has like a rich, uh, it almost got a, like a leathery accord in here, but it's a pretty fresh and clean um, vetiver kind of fragrance. I mean, when they say Grey Vetiver, they mean it. It's a grayish vetiver. Whatever Grey Vetiver means, I mean, there's no such thing as gray vetiver, I'm pretty sure. It's like a root. Uh, but this one is kind of like an office-y wear. This is very professional man, clean, gentlemanly, uh, barbershop-y kind of smell. This has a lot of um, gray vetiver in there. It's got a lot of vetiver in there. And then this like clean um, orange blossom kind of accord in there as well. And this one, the Parfum version has this kind of leathery undertone. So uh, it's a little bit darker than the original gray vetiver. I like this one a lot. It does have, it is a little challenging when it is kind of warmer outside. So just be aware that this thing needs cooler weather to kind of thrive in. Other than that, I really like it. It just needs a cooler weather to kind of like fit in. The Eau de Parfum Grey Vetiver, you can wear that as like a springtime fragrance or a summertime fragrance almost. Uh, but this one, you kind of, it has a temperature maximum, you know, output. Anything above 70, 80 degrees, you're gonna start choking yourself out with this one. But it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just you need cooler weather for it. All right, Tom Ford Beau de Jour. I simply just love this stuff. This is one of my guilty pleasure fragrances. This one smells kind of like an old man, old man, but um, you know, it's got that leathery, soapy kind of quality, the patchouli and this nice touch of a vetivery kind of thing in here. It's a barbershop fragrance, it's a fougere. It's amazing. It's got a lot of lavender in here and it's got like basil and sage and uh, it's, it's very green and herbal and this kind of masculine spicy kind of take to it but uh yeah it's kind of it's a more mature scent for sure this is a this is a fragrance that you would wear to you know your grandpa's church and somebody's getting married there or something that's this fragrance it's not something where you're going to see becky from the club becky from the club is going to think you smell like an old her dad don't do that but other than that uh, you know it's a very very amazing 
fragrance. It's my guilty pleasure fragrance. What can I say? Now, the one you can go see Becky for at the club is Tom Ford Noir Extreme. This stuff you can definitely go see Becky with the club. This is Becky from the club's favorite fragrance. It's rich vanilla. This is spicy. This is like nice, sexy. This is so excellent. And the, uh, the parfum version is also really, really good. I love that stuff. It's almost got a little bit richer and like a leathery kind of thing going on in there. And, um, yeah, that one's stunning too. I have a love. I have a love for that one. It's a fantastic, fantastic fragrance. I really, I like this one a lot. The Eau de Parfum, uh, you know, this one is just, it's so good. It's a fragrance that you wear when you don't know what's gonna work for the occasion, you wear this. Like, especially if you're going out on a date, Tom Ford does sexy amazingly. Anyway, Noir Extreme, this stuff is really good. If you're looking for a date night going out fragrance, this one highly recommended from me. The Parfum version is really good as well. Um, but it's like a uh, warm, rich, spicy vanilla kind of fragrance. And I think there's a, uh, like a coffee note in there too, which is a, a Indian ice cream, I think it is. That's what I think he said. All right, Tom Ford's Oud Mineral. This one is a, a nostalgic fragrance for me. This, I wore this on my birthday. And when I went, I went on a, like it was a business trip uh, to Florida, uh, to the Tampa Bay area and the Clearwater area. And um, I went there for my birthday this year and uh, I, I only brought two fragrances. I brought a, I brought a clone of Neroli Portofino and I brought Tom Ford's Oud Mineral. And every time I smell Tom Ford's Oud Mineral and Neroli Portofino, it brings me back to sitting on the beach on my birthday, just looking out on the ocean. I spent eight hours or so on the beach looking out. My phone died. I was cut off from the world. I was driving my boss's car and I was just MIA from the world sitting on the beach and it was fantastic. And I was wearing Oud Mineral that day and it was just an amazing, every time I smell it, I mean, the thing is, is like when I was walking around Clearwater Beach and when I was on, you know, the beach and smelling this, it fit the occasion. It felt, it's sea salty fresh. It's this aquatic marine kind of smell. But coming back to Colorado, I don't know how I'm gonna ever wear this again. I, I'm definitely gonna wear it, but it's just doesn't fit the atmosphere at all. Anyway, I love this stuff. I can see how it's very subjective and uh, challenging for a lot of people to wear. Oud Mineral is not one of the fragrances that I would say run out and buy right away. I would say run out and buy this if you live in like Florida or Georgia or South Carolina next to the beach in that area, but definitely not if you're living in the mountains in Colorado. Anyway, Oud Mineral, it's a very good fragrance. It's, it's marine, it's heavy. Uh, some of the other ones I wanted to talk about a little bit about the Private Blend. I love the Private Blend. I'm going to be picking up some of them. Just, they're so expensive. They're like car payments, you know, every mortgage payments for every fragrance that you buy. But Lost Cherry is just a cherry fragrance I don't mess with. It, it's just so... Uh, cherry. I, I don't know. I get turned off on the cherry note. A lot of people like the cherry note. I, I can't stand the cherry note, but um, a lot of people kind of like it. You know, it's kind of this almondy cherry kind of sweetness, and I don't know. I, I just don't get on it. I wouldn't mind a lady wearing this around me. I think it's a very nice ladies fragrance, and it could, could be a really sexy fragrance, but um, I don't know. Me wearing it, it's kind of like me wearing like a heavy, heavy rose fragrance. I just don't really see myself wearing it. Um, it's just that cherry nuance comes across like cough syrup to me. That's just in my opinion. Tobacco Vanille is amazing. I don't own any more of the Mason Alhambra clones. Uh, I got rid of all of them because my channel got hit with a counterfeit claim because these companies are, uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, I got rid of all of the clones that I have. So I really need to pick up Tom Ford, uh, Tobacco Vanille or some kind of clone of Tobacco Vanille, uh, Neroli Portofino. 
one of the favorites of mine. I love this stuff a lot. You know, it just needs to be in my collection. Maybe one of these days I'll just not pay my car insurance and just buy this instead and just tell the police officer how good I smell and they'll let me go. That is one of my favorite fragrances almost of all time. Love that. I need a bottle of that like soon. I might pick one up for my birthday. Black Orchid is a fragrance I want my future wife to wear. This stuff is fantastic. I love it in the air. It's difficult for me to wear. I know a lot of guys really, really love wearing this for themselves, but I just think that this, I need this on my future wife is what I'm saying. Tuscan leather is a very challenging fragrance for me to wear. And I feel like if I had it, I would only wear it like once a year. Uh, it's, it's a DNA that it does smell very sexy. It smells like a rugged leather, un, unlike ombre leather, but it's a very, very intense leather fragrance. I don't know if I would really wear it all that much uh, just because the DNA is not really a DNA that I, you know, put put out for. It's just really challenging. I, I think I would only wear it like once or twice a year. Effing Fabulous is an awesome almond fragrance, almond vanilla or almond vanilla and then lavender kind of fragrance. It's a really good fragrance. It kind of smells like baby wipes to me uh, and it's not really... Uh, a DNA that I really, you know, run out the door for. I definitely would love to pick up a bottle, but that's like if I had an extra income that is just like, you know, giving me enough freedom to make mistakes. It's a good fragrance. I would wear it probably a lot, but it's just don't know if the price tag versus how much I would wear it is kind of all over the place. I mean, spending like, you know, $300, $400 on Creed Aventus when you can wear Creed Aventus almost every day, that's different. But if you're spending $200, $300, $400 on effing fabulous and you wear it like three, four times a year, come on, that's kind of silly. Spending $400 on a fragrance is kind of silly anyway. Now the original Tom Ford, just Tom Ford for men. That one is amazing. That one is a really, really nice uh, gingery kind of fragrance. It's definitely a unique fragrance. I mean, it's like mostly citrus and musky, but you know, it's got this like freshness and this like kind of spicy edge to it, but it's, uh, it's pretty wearable for your like everyday kind of use. It's definitely a lot of ginger though. Like that's the one thing that I notice about mine, my uh, dossier fragrance is it's very ginger forward. I mean, there's other things going on in the fragrance, but the ginger is what really stands out to me. And also the orange blossom. It's a pretty fresh orange blossom, lemon ginger kind of mix in there. I have a clone of it from dossier fragrances, which um, I ordered that one back in like 2016 or 17, and I still wear it. I really, really like it. Um, you know, that's a that's a fragrance that I would actually pick up a full bottle of the Tom Ford, uh, just the original Tom Ford for men. It's a really nice, beautiful, gingery kind of fragrance. Uh, the other one is Oud Wood. Tom Ford's Oud Wood is an amazing Oud fragrance. It's a really good clean kind of style woody oud, which has, it has a little bit more of a fruitiness in there as well, but it's a very dry woody kind of smell. And I really do find it amazing. I don't have a clone of it. I only have a dossier fragrance that I bought years and years ago, but I don't have any other clone of oud wood. Actually, I think I do. I think I have one. I'm not sure if it is a clone or that, but regardless, oud wood is one of the ones that I would actually pick up a full bottle of um, because it's such a likable DNA and you can, I could wear that anytime, anywhere and it just smells absolutely incredible. Costa Azura from Tom Ford is really good. It's an aromatic woody kind of fragrance and this like marine character. It's got driftwood, it's got seaweed, it's got some oud, but it's also got lavender, cypress, lemon, some osmanthus, incense, some oak, olibanum, just a variety of different materials in there. And Costa Azura, the Eau de Parfum, uh, is really, really well done. I love wearing that stuff. That one doesn't really last all that long. I know that the, the Parfum version lasts for significantly longer. 
and the Parfum version kind of is the woody aromatic, but it's a little bit more richer. It's got that like ambery kind of nuance in here. It's still marine, but it's just kind of different. They do that whole marketing trick with the like three note breakdown, but this is just lemon, cypress, oak, uh, amber, and some labdanum. And the Parfum version is, I would actually pick up the Parfum version before I picked up the original one. I, I like the Parfum version a lot more than I do the, the um, Eau de Parfum version, but they're both really good. And I would not mind having both in my collection where I can like, you know, wear one for the evening time and one for the, uh, you know, the daytime. But you know, that's whatever. Bitter Peach is interesting. I don't think I would ever pick up Bitter Peach. I just think it's a, too feminine for my taste. And I wish that they went with a little bit more of a sweeter peach. Sweeter peach and vanilla, I, I, I think a lot of people would jam with that a lot more. I know I would jam with it a lot more, but it's got this, it's too bitter for me and it's too spicy. I, I don't know why they went so heavy with the spices in this one. But that's just my take. I mean, there's some peach in the top, blood orange, rum, cognac. It, it's just so spicy. It's incredibly spicy. And I, I don't know why they went with that approach. I guess that's what like perfumery is. It's, uh, you know, an expression of what you think uh, a scent smells like. But yeah, in my opinion, the bitter peach kind of fell flat with just the spiciness. I, I, I think they should have just went in with a little bit more of a sweeter kind of peach fragrance. I think they would sell a lot more to women. And you know, if it's, if it's musky, you know, it would sell to men as well. I think Tom Ford has one of the best like overall houses. They have so much freshness. They have so much like deep and rich and spiciness. Their price points are kind of over the top. It's like $200 for a 50 mil size, which it's just, I understand the market that they're going for. They're going for those, uh, you know, people who don't care about dropping $200 for their fragrance, you know, just walking into a Nordstrom and popping out, you know, your credit card and just putting it, you know, that's the market that they're going for. So, you know, I can't really complain. And two, I mean, it gives a kind of a incentive to, you know, I guess that's why there's so many clones that exist nowadays, I guess. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys have to think in the comments down below. What is your favorite Tom Ford fragrance? I want to know in the comments down below. So drop a comment and I would love to read them. Thanks so much for watching the video, everyone. We'll see you next time.